This week's episode is brought to you by Alabama Power, Management Advantage, and Soggy Bottom Lodge. This week on Outdoor Scholars TV, we head down to Soggy Bottom Lodge for some great food, some great quail hunting. Soggy Bottom Lodge has been a great sponsor of the Outdoor Scholars program since day one. This will be our third year to visit their beautiful lodge and great facilities for a quail hunt. This year, we have Garrett running the camera, Jarrett, John, Caleb, and Hannah will be joining us. We get in, we unpack, we look around at all the great mounts that are inside the lodge and all the new decorations, getting ready for dinner. The steaks are already on the grill waiting for us to come in and get settled in. For most of these students, it's their first quail hunt. Jarrett, he picks this trip every year because he loves the accommodations at Soggy Bottom Lodge. After a great meal and a great evening at Soggy Bottom Lodge, we get ready to head out to the five stand course where we shoot a little skeet before we get ready to go out into the quail field. Before every hunt, we uh, always shoot a little bit of skeet and that's fun, it gets you warmed up. I don't know if it helps you to hit the birds better, but it makes you feel a little bit better and you get to cut up with everybody and just have fun. As we're shooting these skeet, it takes the guys a little, little while to, I think, just wake up. It's early in the morning, they stayed up late. Now it's time to get going. Once all the guys and girls got sighted in, they started busting those skeets left and right. I can't wait to see what the day will bring out in the field. Before we go on any hunt, regardless of where we're at, we always talk about safety. Safety is number one, especially when you're upland hunting. It's so important making sure that your guns are always pointed in a safe direction, away from the guides, away from the dogs, and we know how your excitement may build out in the field when these birds are flushing. But you have to make sure that you stay under control at all times and know where that gun's pointing, making sure it's in a safe direction. Safety is always top priority. You got people to watch out for in quail hunting, you got dogs to watch out for. And at times it can get a little confusing knowing where everybody's at, so you gotta keep your head on the swivel. William puts a big emphasis on it. The handlers do it as well. And we as students just try to make sure that we stay as safe as possible to keep ourselves safe, everybody else around us, and the dogs. Every year when we hunt at Saw Bottom Lodge, they give us their best guides, their best dogs, to get out in the field, to have a good day out shooting some quail. We were able to knock a few birds down, so now we're headed back to the lodge to get them cleaned up. This is our third year coming to Soggy Bottom Lodge. Uh, each year it gets better and better. The food's great, the hunting's great, the dog work has been great today. Uh, a little wet and muddy uh, after the big rain yesterday, but uh, birds flew well. Uh, I want to thank Brandon Smith and J.R. Rivas for allowing us to come and be a part uh, of what they have to offer here at Soggy Bottom. Uh, it allows our students to come out and, and experience a quail hunt, do something that many of them haven't done before, and get to experience the, the first class lodge and, and operation that they have here to allow them to, to see another side of, of the outdoors, how people have careers surrounded around uh, the, the hospitality and the lodging aspect of, of things. So again, we want to thank them 
for allowing us to come out. We look forward to, to next year's trip here at Soggy Bottoms. After our successful quail hunt, we head back to campus to talk with Josh Carney from Son of the South TV. Now that we're back on campus from a great quail hunt at Soggy Bottom Lodge, we have a special guest with us, Josh Carney, Son of the South TV. Our students are pumped to get to hear his inspirational story. So the event takes place in um, one of our buildings called a Reynolds Hall. I, I feel like the students really enjoy that, and I know I do personally, because it gets us to um, see what other, what these people in the outdoor industries that how they become popular and how we could potentially um, get ourselves in that position. You know one thing that we really harp on with our students is safety. As we go out into the field we're always talking about safety. Safety, safety, safety. It's number one. But to have Josh come and tell his story of a tragic hunting accident and to sit, let our students see firsthand someone that experienced such a tragic accident our students sometimes take things for granted. They get tired of me talking about it. So to hear a story like this from someone outside the program was really great for them. Seeing Son of the South uh, makes you realize that you can, you can do anything. There's nothing that'll hold you back as long as you want to do it. It makes you, makes you think about safety a lot more. It, it puts that, it makes sure that it's always in the back of your mind and uh, makes it your top priority when you're hunting or in the woods in general. You know, Josh's story is so unique. With him being a young guy, he can relate to our students, and our students can relate to him. You know, his story is all about coming out of adversity and making the best of it. Our students go through so many different things through this time in their life, and get to hear Josh and his story was a great motivational, inspirational speech for our students. We finish this week's episode up at the Alabama Wildlife Federation Wild Game Cook-Off in Birmingham. Our students love to hunt and fish, but they also enjoy cooking what they harvest. So what better way than us to team up with Alabama Wildlife Federation and their Wild Game Cook-Off? It gives our students an opportunity to try their hand on the grill and see if it really is up to par. At this event, we cooked pheasant, duck, and dove, and we wrapped it in bacon, put some jalapenos on it, threw it on the grill, and then dipped it in our secret sauce. So we had the grill fired up, but we had a little obstacle that we had to overcome before we ever got to the event. As we're traveling down I-65, headed to the Birmingham Zoo for this cook-off, the grill comes flying out of the back of the trailer onto I-65. Pieces are flying everywhere. We're devastated. Luckily, even though our grill was in a thousand pieces and battered, hey, it would still work. So we cooked on it. We ended up getting first in the event. We were a little bit nervous whenever we were preparing everything and seeing all the other contestants and all their dishes. But I will say this, that's an opportunity. If I ever get to go to again, I'm definitely going to. There's a bunch of food you can sample and try and it's great food. It's very important for our students to be involved uh, with organizations like the AWF and also events like this Wild Game Cook-Off. It gives our program exposure in our local community. It's also a way of giving back to an organization that supports wildlife efforts. So all in all it's a great event, it's a great opportunity to get out and meet people. It's just a fun evening of cooking wild game and enjoying the company. Next week on Outdoor Scholars TV. This week's episode is brought to you by Alabama Power, Management Advantage, and Soggy Bottom Lodge.